from the x-rays that we use conventionally in diagnosis of the disease. Then we'll be discussing about what are radionuclides. Uh, again, gamma camera systems, which are there to capture the radiations. Then we have SPEC, that is single photon emission computed tomography. And last, we'll be discussing about positron emission tomography, right? So before I begin my lecture, uh, I just want you to just take it as a story and you will be enjoying it better. So first of all, uh, I'll start with what is basically nuclear medicine. Everyone has talked about it a lot. It is a specialized imaging modalities. But what is basically this nuclear medicine? Nucleus in our childhood days or in our chemistry lectures, we must have heard what is nucleus. You know, we have heard what is cell. You know, in human body, it is made up of cell. We all have read about cell is a structure and functional unit of life. But actually, it is the nucleus which is present in the cell because cells are made up of molecules. Molecules are made up of atoms and atom has a tiny bit, but it is very much functional because it controls all the activities of the cell, is it? So nuclear medicine basically deals with all the nucleus and that nuclear radiations which are used in imaging modalities so that we can diagnose the disease as well as manage the disease. So what is nuclear medicine? It is a medical specialty wherein we use radioactive substances. These radioactive substances are injected in the body by combining with some chemical compound and they emit certain radiations that radiations are captured by the gamma camera which is used in the diagnosis and treatment of the disease so what are these basically radioactive substances that we are talking about here why they are called radioactive substances because they emit radiations radiation means why do they emit radiations because these radioactive substances they have a power of radioactivity radioactivity means whenever you know, an atom is unstable. To become stable, it emits certain radiations and that radiations are called gamma rays, right? So this radioactivity is our the power of diagnosis in the nuclear medicine because all these radioactive substances, they are either by inhalation. Inhalation means like you are inhaling them. IV root means like you are inserting IV injection right or you are taking all this radionuclides oral route and once you take them they emit certain radiations and that radiations are called gamma rays so that gamma rays common sense it's a name gamma rays gamma cameras will capture those radiations convert it into a signal and the image will be formed which will be helpful in diagnosis and management of the disease proceeding next now these radionuclide substances can be directly injected let's say we take a technetium we have uh, you know in the slide you can say technetium is there we have gallium we have iodine we have krypton can we directly insert them in the body no we have to combine them with certain chemical which is biocompatible so that it can reach the target organs so these radionuclides basically let's say if we talk about technetium 99 you know that is a radionuclide so it is combined with mdp mdp is nothing but the, it is just like a chemical methylene diphosphate because it is compatible with the bone so when you are going with the bone scan right you can see in the picture all these radioactive compound technetium 99 which is binded by mdp when it is injected into the vein of the body it is attracted to the bone because it is biocompatible with the hydroxyapatite crystals of the bone so when it goes inside the bone so bone is a target issue here because we want bone scan to be made right so that will emit certain radiations and these radiations are nothing but these are gamma rays which are captured by the gamma cameras and the images formed right now when we talk about nuclear medicine everyone like even the layman terms will say why do we need nuclear medicine we have like plain film radiography is there plain film radiography means we have orthopontogrammographs we have uh, you know other extra oral modalities lateral self is there some mental vertex is there pa view ap view all those conventional x-ray things we already have right even those are like two dimensional one we have even specialized Imaging modalities like we have CT scan available in the market, MRI is there, CBCT is there. Why do we need nuclear medicine like when we have all those technologies? So there is a difference between that conventional technology. Conventional technology means when we are talking about X-rays. So that is conventional X I have written, X-rays, right? So how it differs from the nuclear medicine? See, in the X-rays, the problem that comes was plain film radiography, CT, MRI, everything can detect a pathology 
based on the morphological anatomy of the tissues right for example when we talk about there is a fracture in the bone so there must be some step deformity or some radiolucency which will be seen on the scan and then we are able to diagnose if it's like a ct scan or MRI that can detect even bone, you know, tumors are there, benign tumors are there, malignant tumors are there. Those are ready to detect. But the problem is they are targeting only the anatomy of the body. If there is morphological alteration in the anatomy, you can diagnose by those modalities. But if there are certain diseases which, you know, do not show any morphological alteration in the anatomy. So if there is no morphological alteration, how we are able to diagnose them? So we have this nuclear medicine, which talks only about the abnormal biochemical changes which occur in the body without changing the anatomy, right? So even in the early stage of malignancy, let's say I'm about to acquire a cancer. Do I know I'm about to acquire a cancer? No, I don't know. So this nuclear medicine can tell me in advance that okay abnormal biochemical changes are occurring in the cell in future i can acquire a malignancy malignancy means cancer right so the conventional x-rays they were targeting conventional x-rays means which are used in ct scan mri whatsoever so those are targeting only the morphological alteration of the anatomy whereas nuclear medicine it targets the biochemical or basically the functioning of the body. It will show how the tumor is like either it is progressing or either it is regressing. Is the disease going to be very aggressive or you are able to control them, right? So those are x-rays and you know those x-rays are always the external beam of radiation. Like you make the patient stand in between the OPG machine. There is source, there are image receptors. The so source will emit the radiation, image receptor will catch the radiation after they pass through the body and they form an image. So X-rays is always external, right? But when we talk about gamma rays, as we have read earlier, that gamma rays are produced when the radionuclides are actually injected into the body. They target the tissue, emit certain radiation. So here our own body is emitting the radiations. So our own body, that's why it is called radiology done inside out because our own body is emitting certain radiation. So we become radioactive for maybe three, four hours, right? So that's why conventional, they deal with x-rays, they deal only with the morphological alteration, x-ray source is always external, whereas nuclear medicine, it is not only on the imaging anatomy, but it always targets the biochemical changes or abnormal biochemical functioning of the body. That's why this imaging modality is also called physiological imaging. And that is also called physiological or functional imaging or nuclear medicine imaging, whatever you want to call it. But it is basically your own cells are emitting the radiation because you were injected by some radionuclide and that is emitting the gamma rays which are captured by the gamma cameras. So gamma cameras, uh, you know, they are there for two-dimensional imaging also. They are there for three-dimensional imaging also. So basically, when you talk about diagnosis, like using nuclear medicine as a diagnosing certain pathologies, we have two techniques. We have either scintigraphy, right? That is a two-dimensional technique, right? I'll explain to you all those things earlier, but just like a layout, we have two-dimensional scintigraphy imagings are there. Second, we have three-dimensional SPECT CT, as I already told, single photon emission commuted topographic systems. We have PET scans available in the market today, position emission tomography. So two-dimensional is scintigraphy, three-dimensional is we have SPECT as well as PET, right? Now, when you talk about such techniques of nuclear medicine, I'll just show you how the machines basically look like when you actually going for a scan. This is a SPECT CT machine. It looks like almost like a CT scheme. CT means like computer tomography, right? We have a gantry. Gantry means all these circular things that you can see in the machine that is called gantry. There is a table. So SPECT CT, we have PET CT, and that's how the gamma cameras look like. I hope it makes sense just by I'm just showing you how the machinery looks like, you know, before going for a scan. Now, when you are actually going for a scan and you are a nuclear medicine technology, obviously you cannot force a patient to go for a scan. You will explain what is the pathology in the patient and you will explain the procedure. Procedure, as I already told you, such radionuclide and radiopharmaceuticals are actually in injected into your vein. So when they're actually injected into your vein and then the target they reach the target organs, emit certain radiations, and that will be captured. So all the procedure has to be explained to the patient. You have to tell the patient, you have to pre-advance the patient. In fact, you have to tell not to drink anything, like drink really less fluids, not to eat anything, because it can cause nausea and certain complications, vomiting and all that stuff can occur. 
right so we make the environment safe for the patient so that the, when the patient is actually convinced that you're going for a nuclear scan it will make him psychologically in a comfort zone and he'll be able to take the stand better because this scan is going to take like 35 40 minutes patient has to be aware about it you have to take the consent of the patient right then while I was explaining to you the methodology in the nuclear medicine, I already told you such radioactive pharmaceuticals or radioactive materials or radionuclide, whatsoever you want to call it, they are delivered. Here I have shown IV root. IV roots mean intravenous roots. So they are injected in the IV or a vein area of the patient. And such radioactive traces will reach the target organs so it will take like two to four hours to reach the target organs so once they reach the target organ they're gonna emit certain radiation so in the second point you can see first point you can see the tracer is being injected in the iv root through iv root in the patient and the second slide you can see the tracer is getting circulated in the blood once it gets out of the blood it reaches the bone and while the patient lies on the table in the third area you can see the patient is lying on the table and there is a small circular device that is called gamma camera it captures all the radiation which are emitted by the patient so we have to memorize that thing again here the patient is radioactive patient inside is emitting the radiation of the gamma rays which are captured by the gamma camera other name of gamma cameras are also there we call anger camera skin telenic camera all that stuff is there right so now when you talk about gamma camera anger camera or skin telegraphy skin telegraphy camera this has certain components right like every machine has certain components. Okay, this is a table, this is a gantry. Same way, the gamma camera also has certain composition. So we can see in this slide, the patient lies on the table, right? Of that machine that I already showed you. So when patient lies on the table, the emission or the gamma ray emission, which comes out of the patient, that is first of all captured by the collimeter. Collimeter is major component of the gamma camera. So only the radiation which passes through the parallel like you can see here, one line is going in between the plates of the calometer and then reaching a crystal. That green color is called the scintigraphic crystal. So when this radiation, gamma rays, which are coming out of the patient, they pass through the collimeter, they reach a scintigraphic crystal. This scintigraphic crystal, whenever they capture the gamma rays, it fluorescence. Fluorescence means it converts that gamma rays into flashes of light. Fluorescence means flashes of light. So such flashes of light, they are detected by, you can see there are photo multiplier tubes. So they capture such flashes of light, convert it into a signal and electronically, you know, analog to digital and images displayed on the screen that you can see in the lowermost image. So in this image, in this slide, I have described patient lies on the table. The patient is already being injected by the radioisotope and that radioisotopes or radionuclears or radiopharmaceuticals or radiographic tracers, they emit gamma rays. Those gamma rays, whatever are going parallel in between the collimeter, they will be captured by the scintigraphic camera scintigraphic crystal basically and scintigraphic crystal fluorescence fluorescence means it will capture the gamma rays converted into flashes of light and those light will be captured by our photo multiplier tubes they will amplify the signal and the signal will be electronic electronically they will formulate an image and that image scan will be helpful in our diagnosis i hope it makes sense now but still in real that's how gamma camera look like and capture the signal signal means whatever flashes of light were coming out of the gamma rays that flashes of light it will amplify the signal amplify means it will increase the signal and convert into a diagnostic image two-dimensional image so that we are able to diagnose certain pathologies
that scintillation crystal what i was talking about is made up of certain elements are there namely sodium iodide and some thallium amount is also there because this crystal is gonna convert gamma rays into flashes of light that flashes of light after amplification with the photomultiplier tubes they will be converted into image after going through a pulse height analyzer and formulation of image will be there i hope it makes sense right now now we have uh, you know in real how things work out in the first slide you can see uh, the radio tracer or radio pharmaceutical is being injected in the body second patient lies on the table now you know in this we have two dimensional also we have three dimensional also basically the setup remains the same number of gamma cameras it can be only one gamma camera in certain machines on the very left you can see there are multiple gamma cameras and such way all the radiation or gamma rays which are emitted by the patient that will be captured by the gamma camera and leading to the formulation of the image so now uh, i already told you in this techniques we're going to be reading about spect that is single photon emission commuted tomography we will be reading about pet spect is similar just now i told in spect ct scan basically the patient lies on the table multiple cameras or single gamma camera it rotates around the patient just like here you know the cameras are there this is the camera it's going to capture all the radiations which are coming out of the patient it will be captured and sometimes in certain machines single camera is there certain machine multiple cameras are there they rotate more than 360 degrees around the patient because they need to capture all the gamma rays which are being emitted by the patient and why gamma rays are being emitted by the patient because they were injected with the radio nucleate or radioactive substance and such way if you see a left slide you can see the functioning organs will be seen how they are functioning how heart is pumping the blood everything blood supply even your liver even your kidney even your thyroid even your salivary gland even the bone scans everything will be visualized just by radioactive substances being injected into the body and I, as i repeat again they target only the abnormal biochemical or functioning of the cell if we talk about cancer cancer is nothing it is a tumor malignant tumor right malignant tumor the definition only says uncontrolled and uncoordinated growth of cells so when the cells are growing it means dna is also multiplying right cells are growing nucleus is multiplying dna is multiplying so all that abnormal biochemical changes which are occurring will be shown by the functional imaging modality and that is a spect scan now it shows just like a ct scan as i already told you it shows all the tomographic slices through the patient like we have multiplanar imaging can be model we have axial we have coronal so all that imaging can be obtained by a spec ct scan and gamma cameras they have spec capability of course that's why they are able to capture right the radiation so single or multiple camera rotated around the patient 360 degree and such imaging process it automatically takes 30 to 45 minutes you don't have to do anything it just like automatically will capture the images in 30 to 45 minutes all the images will be obtained now as compared to scintigraphy scintigraphy was two dimensional this is three dimensional so three dimensional obviously it has a extra advantage there won't be any superimposition of the structure you will be able to target the pathology in a much easier way with a good contrast as well second modality after the spec we going to be talking about the pet scan pet scan as the name indicates p means positron e means emission t means tomography positron means just like a electron everyone has heard about the electrons right we have heard about uh, electrons are having negative charge right so positrons are just like electrons but they are having a positive charge okay so positron here we are talking about posit positron emission tomographic scan right so in the pet ct also right when you talk about it is just like a ct scan only right the difference here is in the scintigraphy or in the spect we were injecting sudden radio nucleates like technetium gallium thallium we were injecting right but they are artificial sources here the radio nucleates that we take are carbon nitrogen oxygen fluoride all these are naturally in our organic molecules because in the organic chemistry that we have read in the 12th classes or something you know 
every structure of our body there are certain organic compounds already occurring in the body tissues organs everything is made up of carbon nitrogen oxygen so here we are using only the isotopes which are or already present in our body they are called organic isotopes right so such radionuclides now same way in the scintigraphy also in the nuclear imaging spec when we were talking about we had combined technetium 99 with the mdp to make it a radio pharmaceutical here that combination cannot be just chemically combined just like that here we need a machine called cyclotron you can see in the slide i have shown you the machine this cyclotron will help in combining a radionuclide that is carbon nitrogen oxygen or fluoride it will be combined with some pharmaceutical chemical it can be glucose it can be amino acid like in technetium with mdp we have done earlier here since we are targeting only the organic molecules so organic compounds organic radioisotopes carbon nitrogen fluoride all those things will be combined to glucose and amino acid not just chemically but in a machine called cyclotron and once they are combined and the most common radio pharmaceutical that we can obtain is 18f fluorodeoxy glucose which is most commonly used chemical like technetium was used in the spec ct right but in pet we use fluorodeoxy glucose which is most commonly used same way you know in the previous slide we can say f fluoro deoxy glucose is being injected into the patient so once it is injected it is also a radionuclide so what it's going to do it's also going to reach the target issues target organs and it's going to also emit certain rays but first ray will be emitting by them that will be positron as the name indicates pet ct means it has to be positron first so once you are injecting such radionuclide first chemical that will be released will be positron and this such is the way like the patient lies on the table you know uh, procedure is being explained to the patient iv uh, you know all this radio pharmaceutical fdg is being injected into the patient patient lies on the table and automatically table moves inside the gantry in pet ct we don't have any gamma camera or anything like that in pet ct what happens is as i already told you once the radio nucleide or radio pharmaceutical or radio tracer once they are injected in our body they going to reach the target tissues and instead first they will emit a positron first they will emit a positron so in the procedure also i have mentioned like for the clarity once the radiographic tracer is injected into the body it reaches the target of interest and all this nucleus because they are unstable right they will emit positron in the spect or earlier scintigraphy first they were emitting directly gamma rays here they are not emitting gamma rays directly first they are you know producing a positron and that positron obviously it is just like a positive charge electron it's going to somehow in our target tissue only it's going to meet some electron and mute and that reaction positive electron and negative electron when they combine together it's going to produce a two gamma rays two gamma rays with the 55 51 kilowatt of energy will be released so you can imagine first the process starts with a positron and that positron somehow collaborates or you know reacts with the electron because positive drawn is nothing it is a positive charge electron so once it reacts with the electron right there comes out to be like a reaction that takes place and that reaction is called mutual annihilation reaction and that reaction leads to the production of two gamma rays which are produced at 180 degree angle you can see in the slide 180 degree angle the two gamma rays will be produced once the positron reacts with the electron and that gamma rays which are emitted that are like 551 kilo electron volts right and this gamma rays will be detected like in gamma cameras there was something else going on there was a collimeter photo multiplier tubes here we have in the ring shaped detectors are there all that ring that i have shown you in the blue color we have detectors and that detectors are made up of a compound or a element you can say bismuth germinate bismuth germinate right and this you know gamma rays will be captured okay and you know it will helpful be you know they'll be electronically captured and the image formulation will be seen on a computer so it is all digital you don't have to do anything you just have to inject a radionuclide make the patient lie on the table after 4 hours you know you will be seeing all the detectors the machine goes inside okay 
and the table moves inside the gantry the patient first of all they will emit a positron positron will in interact with the electron and two gamma rays will be formed and those gamma rays will be captured by the detectors which are formed by bismuth germinate and that will be helpful in obtaining a digital image on a computer so you can check the functional imaging that has been going on and such protect you know all the detection part it takes just 10 to 20 nanoseconds just 10 to 20 nanoseconds so now when we have talked about nuclear medicine we have talked about gamma cameras we have talked about spect we have talked about pet scan right what are the indications indications means in which pathologies you like to use nuclear imaging modalities first it is automatically clear that conventional was dealing with the morphological alteration here we don't we are not related with anatomy or anything we are related only how the target organs are functioning in our body is there any abnormal biochemical changes due to tumor because tumor as we know it consumes a lot of glucose right so is it consuming so much of glucose so how the functioning takes place that are called indications of nuclear medicine so first things okay you you know we read about bone scans that that was done by technician so we can analyze abnormal bone activity which is occurring bone activity we can talk about any bone activity which can occur like let's say there is a development disorder called condylar hyperplasia like by child only by childhood congenitally condyle is like growing right so when the condyle hyperplasia takes place there is an abnormal metabolic activity if we talk about fibrosis lesions also be it fibrous dysplasia be it paget disease that is like abnormal metabolic activity occurs in the bone so that can be diagnosed by the nuclear medicine so first is developmental that is condylar hyperplasia second we can tell about you know all that activity abnormal bony activity which occurs in the fibrosis lesions then we can talk about bone tumors we can talk about metastasis in the bone. What do you mean by metastasis? Like if carcinoma is there, any cancer which is occurring in the body, right? And it goes to a distant tissues by neurological, by lymphogenic or a hematological route that is called metastasis. And even in the osteomyelitis, be it, you can call them like under infection category. So in infection categories, when the bone is actually being infected, osteomyelitis. So osteo means bone, myelitis means infection in the bone right so osteomyelitis also it is able to detect then we have cancer metastasis we have already discussed in the bone also and in the cancer other tissues also if it spreads out and also for example if you want to treat carcinomas like head and neck carcinomas if we talk about just the head and neck pathologies we can use this nuclear medicine because such radiations can be given to the patient or externally applied and that will lead to the healing of the certain cancers and that is how these are the indications of our nuclear medicine so developmental tumors fibrosis lesions metastasis diagnosis of cancer and early detection of cancer in fact because abnormal biochemical changes will start early sometimes right staging of cancer if you want to predict the you know what is the is the bone involvement taking place you know so that can be used by a nuclear medicine. We can diagnose by nuclear medicine. And last will be, we can plan the treatment just like a radiotherapy. Nuclear medicine can also be used to treat the cancers. And that is called intervention, interventional radiotherapy. Earlier we were talking about diagnosis. Now we we're talking about intervention. Right. So now we have certain scans like I have shown you. We have scintigraphy. We have before showing you the scan, just one line I will tell you when the radio tracer is being injected in your body. Right. So that will be absorbed by certain organs. Right. So wherever you see black areas or white areas in the slide only you can see wherever you see the black areas or the bright areas, that means the tracer amount is actually being retained by the organ. It means, indicates, these are called hot spots. So hot spots are nothing. In the slides only, wherever you see black area in the first slide, you can see black areas wherever it is seen. It means these are called hot spots. Why they are called hot spots? Because radiographic tracer is being absorbed by them. Why it is absorbed by them? Because more metabolic changes or more abnormal biochemical changes are occurring in that area. So as to say, first slide you can see in the right body of the mandible, angle of the mandible, little bit about the ramus, there is abnormal metabolic activity seen. It can be because of some bone fracture might have happened in that area. And because of that fracture, some healing process, biochemical changes are taking place. That is the reason of appearance of hot spot in this site. 
So these black areas or white areas, they are called hotspot areas. Hotspot means where the dye is retained more. Which organ retains the dye more? It depends more the metabolic activity occurring in that organ or in the bone more tracer it's gonna retain it and more tracer it's gonna obtain or retain more black it's gonna appear on the slide so these are called hot spot areas so first slide maybe a fracture has occurred in the you know body of the mandible or angle of the mandible region and due to that abnormality the hot spots are seen second slide you can see it looks like you know a lateral view of the skull and in the lateral view you can see white area right and this is because some metabolic activity which is occurring in the condylar or a tmj area so you can suspect maybe condylar hyperplasia because of the abnormal metabolic activity occurring in that area right third slide you can see the lower most image you can see some you can see you know hot spot is appearing here in the c section you can see hot spot right in the b section you can see hot spot a section you can see a section is nothing but a ct image you can see ct scan this is basically this is mandible so in the mandible you can see some floor of the mouth area sub abnormalities occurring and this after taking a skin t graph you can see hot spot is being retained here because more radiographic tracer is being observed in this area more radiographic tracer more black the area more black the area means more metabolic activity is occurring in this area and after seeing in the spect ct we can see more activity here maybe a carcinoma which is occurring in the floor of the mouth area so that's how we diagnose just by looking at the nuclear imaging modalities be it skin t graph be it spect next we have again a scan here you can see you know on left side of the mandible whole of the bone is showing a hot spot area on right side also some hot spot areas are seen right and such hot spot you can see in the lower most these are called by the way axial images axial images and this axial images you can see hot spot is more prevalent in the left side of the mandible maybe a osteomyelitis occurring in the entire bone and because of that osteomyelitis infection more inflammation is being observed that's the reason of holding up more radiographic tracer more the radiographic spacer tracer more black it's gonna appear on the image next slide this is like a left side we have a ct scan axial imaging again and right side we have a pet scan in left side we can see tongue cancer is there but it is not being observed clearly node metastasis is also there what is lymph node metastasis when the cancer spreads to the lymph node because obviously there is a spread of tumor how spread of tumor takes place either by the lymphogenesis route either by the hematological route either by the neurological spread or perineural spread so here node metastasis is there but in the CT, everything looks the same. If I see here, okay, it's almost the same. Here, okay, some abnormality is seen, but I'm not able to diagnose it clearly. So what I do, I use the PET scan and PET scan, I can see, okay, this is the area where radiographic tracer has been retained more. So more the activity, more the hotspot and node metastasis also. Just by infraction of seconds, I could diagnose that something is pathology is there in this area. And pathology is, you know, having a metastasic also, and that has involved the node. So CT scan, some things we cannot see clearly. So PET CT, it is actually showing a, any layman person, even a school kid also standing, he also say, oh, this was second image is more clear. More clear means it has actually demarcated the where the local site of pathology is there, where it is more prevalent. So tongue cancer is there and it is progressed towards the node also. So node metastasis has already occurred, means the poorer the prognosis of the patient. Next slide you can see, uh, in the last molar area, we can see some carcinomatous ulcer is there, right? Bone is also exposed. So in the B image, we can see, yes, the carcinoma is occurring and it has involved the bone. C and D are PET scans where you can see, okay, the hot spot is occurring in this area. So anyone can diagnose, yes, the abnormality or the more radiographic tracer is being retained in this area. So high chances are it can be some malignancy because so much bright signal is coming out of the PET scan. It means more biochemical changes are occurring in this area. More biochemical changes means more abnormality, more mitosis occurring. DNA is constantly multiplying. The tumor is taking more and more glucose. So all those biochemical changes which are occurring that can be actually visualized by the D slide. 
so such way you are able to diagnose yes something is wrong some pathology is occurring but it is as i already said it is not showing the boundary it is not targeting about the okay you know what is the exact boundary no it is not it is just telling you this is a site where abnormal biochemical processes are being taken place that's it next nowadays they say still now when we were reading uh, you know here you are you guys are hearing my lecture and i'm constantly speaking about okay conventional x-rays they were talking about only the bone anatomy okay when unless and until there is alteration in the anatomy you know ct and mri cannot detect anything right but they say pet and spect both the nuclear imaging modalities i already told you they do not target the anatomy they detect the pathology only on the basis of abnormal biochemical changes which are occurring so now fusion imaging has come to the market fusion imaging says let's combine both the techniques ct or mri it is giving more morphological anatomical content like okay while looking at the anatomy i can say it is a fracture i can say it is a osteomyelitis or bone is gone or if it is like a carcinoma okay it will lead to you know resorption of bone as compared to the roots where if it is a cyst it will cause resorption of roots more as compared to the bone right so ct scan we have like okay it will give us anatomy pet ct it will show you where the abnormal biochemical change is taking place basically it will tell you the functioning of the organ so let's combine these two okay and that is called fusion imaging because when you combine these two will be having two advantages will have morphology anatomical also and will have functional also so anatomy and function when combined together you know best results can be found when you talking about the diagnosis here and it will lead to you know we don't have to do surgically excise the tissue because certainly what happens is sometimes a tissue loses its boundary how the tissue or the organ loses its boundary let's say i got a cancer today okay any cancer or something i go to i go for a surgical because treatment of oral cancer either is like chemo chemotherapy either is a radiotherapy or either it is a surgery if it is like a t1 t2 staging we choose radiotherapy or surgery but when the disease advances t3 or t4 we have to sort out chemotherapy also right so we can avoid surgery just by you know combining the two methodology ct we have anatomy pet we have functioning so anatomy and functioning together we call we call it fusion imaging so as i already told in indication that it can be used in the treatment of cancer also nuclear imaging earlier we were talking about is like how you are able to diagnose certain pathologies but now when we are treating treating means kind of a international interventional level of pathology right so when you talking about interventional uh, you know therapy by nuclear medicine like such radionuclear therapy it can be given orally it can be placed over the organ right so such way we are able to treat certain diseases like we can treat cancers like thyroid cancer we can treat we can treat skin cancer we can treat hyperthyroidism we can treat certain blood disorders also and such you know radionuclear substances i just have mentioned below couple of them you can just memorize okay iodine is there uterum is there so all those radionuclides they are helpful in interventional therapy also in treatment of certain carcinomas or any of the blood disorders or thyroid related disorders so it has indications in diagnosis like nuclear medicine i'm talking about here so nuclear medicine has indication about the diagnosis of the pathology whereas interventional also interventional means you are actually treating something also not just diagnosis you are treating so that also is helpful just by the nuclear medicine now panacea or redundancy redundancy panacea means like what advantages like pros of the nuclear medicine redundancy means what are the things that are you know holding us back in opting for nuclear medicine so common sense if you talk about pros we know we can see the functioning of the tissues which cannot be seen by ct scan or mri we can see whole skeleton can be imaged during one bone scan whereas redundancy it doesn't have proper image resolution we cannot see the anatomy of the tissue so images are a bit compromised radiation dose is very much high and they are not disease specific disease specific means just by looking at them we cannot diagnose okay it is osteomyelitis only or it is carcinoma only we can suspect more metabolic activities occurring in that area so paul willard had discovered gamma rays ronjan has discovered x rays so we need to choose how we are supposed to apply them wherever necessary go for a lara principle as low as reasonably achievable we are supposed to you know give the radiation only when it is necessary and only when it confirms for our diagnosis not by just okay we want to try nuclear medicine on this patient no so thank you so much everyone and thank you masa
for inviting me as a guest speaker and thank you john lawrence who is the father of nuclear medicine here thank you so much any questions okay thank you doctor for the nice presentation thank you all right uh, we have a question here from one of our students. You can read it and uh, answer it, please. Uh, by any chance, a train regular? Yeah, why not? But under the supervision of nuclear me medicine specialist, because radio tracers, it is easy to say they are injected, but they can have certain complications also. Complication in a way, they can have an allergic reaction sometimes. Okay. So you have, you need a trained nuclear medicine, you know, medicine radiologist who should be standing next to you so that any complication when it happens, and of course you need a good setup. So any complications that happen, you need to be physically there to avoid that. Okay, thank you. This is the only question. Uh, I would like to thank you again for you so being with, with us today. Uh, we enjoy our webinar, your webinar, and uh, wish you all the best. In, okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Sharif. Thank you to uh, you know all the team of Masa, like owner, directors, you know, dean, everyone. Thank you for inviting me as a guest speaker. It's a privilege and heartfelt gratitude thank to us. Thank you here yeah, and uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank okay, you. At the end, I would like to thank all our audience uh, who attend and also the online audience. And uh, please uh, accept my best wishes for all your day. Thank you very much and see you next time. Thank you, doctor. Take care. Thank you. Take care, sir. Bye. Thank you.